time I'm going up on stage, I always get nervous. Uh, and if you look at some of the best players in the world, the sports, uh, not to compare myself to any of the Sachins and Sehwags of the world, I think a little bit of nervousness is a good sign. Today, the topic that has been assigned to all the speakers here is a good start in life. So hopefully, I, my, my thing, the thing about myself is that I always start slow in life, but then I pick up speed and hopefully you will enjoy the last nine minutes of uh, my speech a lot more than the first nine. I will try to hold the mic as close to my uh, mouth, uh, otherwise I be told this will not get recorded. So, uh, what exactly is a good start in life? Uh, you know, people have very different definitions of how they define a good start. For me, the good start in my life, as you can see, uh, and I'm a boring guy, somebody said that uh, Mr. Patra had said uh, PowerPoint is neither makes a power nor makes a point. I unfortunately lie on my slides in case I forget stuff. So I'll refer to my slides once in a while. Hopefully I'll do a lot of this impromptu. Uh, and this will come straight from the heart rather than from the slides. So uh, for me, the good start in life has been my education and my values. And what I mean by that is uh, I will first go over three very simple stories from my life uh, in terms of what uh, education and values mean to me followed by the lessons that I have learned from the businesses that I've started all over the world. Uh, and then finally the successes and failures. A lot of the topic, uh, a lot of the talk today as you will see is about embracing failure. We are all high achieving individuals, uh, strapped for success, you know, high strung, focused on achievement. But uh, today I'll talk to you about the importance of failure and struggle as well. Uh, and then finally I will finish with the 10 commandments of entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, usually the way I get over my nervousness in the beginning is I ask the audience a few questions and then once they stumble and scatter upon the answers, I feel much better about myself and that's where I go from. So, unfortunately as a TEDx uh, format, I can't do that, otherwise, trust me, I would be cold calling a lot of you sitting in the audience today. So, my good start in life, like I said, was my education and values. So, where did I get these from? Uh, first story I have for you is that I grew up in a joint family, very loving and caring, uh, very encouraging of what we wanted to do when we grew up, classes we wanted to take, so on and so forth. First roadblock in life, uh, when I would, when I had finished uh, toddler train, which is a kindergarten at that time, and was applying to school, I unfortunately didn't get accepted into any of the schools that I had applied to. Zero schools accepted me. I was four and a half years old, completely shattered. Um, and then I went to my grandmother one day, and I told her, Dadi, kahi admission nahi hua. She said, Beta, don't worry, you will come to Dadi school from today. And that probably was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because along with the mathematics formulas and tables that she taught us, what additionally she taught me was very strong values of discipline, respecting your elders, uh, the value and importance of a good education. And uh, just all the principles, I'm a very disciplined person. And a lot of the way that I behave and react and act now is thanks to the values that I got from my grandmother. So that was the first you know, failure converted into success. Second thing that happened to me in life was again a very tough uh, instance. I was a good sportsman, went to modern school, uh, which, which is where I gave a lot of my education and values as well. Uh, when I was seven years old, I injured my ankle playing sports. Uh, I was a crazy kid, always running around, playing a lot of sports. Uh, you know, broke my ankle once, twice, thrice, four times, five times. By the age of 10, and this, I've never said this in public, but today I feel compelled to share this story. Uh, I was completely disabled with my right leg. All the doctors that my parents took me to told my parents that unfortunately this kid will never be able to play sports again in his life. Uh, the tendon which is supposed to be about this big was, was about uh, this big. And uh, I had to be carried up to my classroom in class 5 every day. It was very shameful and uh, I struggled with uh, self-confidence issues. Uh, and you know, it, it was really a big, big, very big deal for me to go to school every day. The only thing that kept me going was my parents' encouragement and my grandmother's lessons that she had taught me in life uh, about being confident, resilient and so on and so forth. One day I saw my neighbor who was doing Taekwondo um, and you know, flying all over the place uh, and I, I kind of hobbled on my crutches towards my neighbor's house and, uh, and I looked at the coach and the coach looked back at me and said, would you like to join the class? Imagine you've hobbled their way on crutches. This is a very intense form of martial arts. And the guy looks at you and says, would you like to join? I look back at him and said, sir, are you joking? I am disabled. He looked back at me and said, this is the first and last time in your life that you will use the word disabled. Life is about converting disability into ability. 
I have never looked back ever since. I went on to become a black belt, uh, you know, fought many a championship, many, won many a gold medal with the same right leg. Uh, and the, the most important thing that that taught me was, you know, having courage in your convictions. If you have the courage and you have the dream, you can make anything possible. And as young students, that's the reason why I wanted to share this story. Irrespective of what circumstances you face in your own life, always look at the positive side of it and you know, work through your goals. Uh, there is no substitute for hard work and hopefully you'll be able to count every obstacle that you face in your life. The third story that I want to share is, uh, my father actually got into the Harvard Law School when he was very young. But unfortunately, my grandfather fell very ill when, when my father was supposed to go to Harvard. He had two unmarried sisters and a younger brother. If he had not taken over the family business, our family would have completely fallen apart. So when I was very young, he took my, my father took my sister and I to Harvard uh, one day and showed us the campus and I said, Wait up, it is my dream that one day you go to Harvard Business School. Since that very young age, I had that dream. Uh, and I kind of worked backwards from that dream, knowing that if I had to go to Harvard Business School someday, what did I need to do? I asked everybody who had gone to that school, family, friends, I read up everything about it. At that time, unfortunately, the internet wasn't uh, a very well used and known uh, source of information. It hardly existed. So I spoke to every single alum that I could find out. And this is what I was told. You need to work in private equity, do investment banking before that, go to the water school, and then maybe one day do something extraordinary in your life. And then maybe one day you will be accepted into Harvard Business School. I don't Like I will do something extraordinary in my life. I don't know what I did. I kind of slipped through the cracks to make it to Harvard eventually. But the first step was to go to the University of Pennsylvania. I ate, breathed, drank that school every day for five, six years of my life. To the point I knew every single building that existed in that institution, every single class that was taught at that institution, every single Nobel laureate that had graduated from that school and taught at that school. If you could blindfold me and I could walk you better on that campus than any of the students who are currently studying there. I was obsessed. And it was my dream to go there. When I was in class 12, the admissions director from that university came down one day. And I went up to him and I told him, Sir, I have come to this presentation by the University of Pennsylvania every year of my life since 8th grade. This is the year that I apply. This is my application and so on and so forth. He said, no chance. I'm sorry, you are not a good fit or a candidate uh, for the school. And unfortunately, your chances of getting into the school are very, very skewed. At that time, there were no computers. I had printed out the application and learned how to type on a typewriter to typewrite my entire application to the school. I came back home that day and I tore up my application. I just tore it up. I said, because many apply for now. If the school doesn't want me, I don't want them back. Very difficult uh, four hours I was spent crying. Then my father and my boa came to me and they explained to me, you know, life is about taking chances. Maybe they don't want you, but this is one person's opinion. Why don't you still apply? There may be a chance that you'll get in. I took that chance. I typed painfully with tears dropping uh, from my eyes that entire application again and I ended up applying to the University of Pennsylvania. I ended up getting accepted uh, and now I sit on the admissions committee and I encourage every single applicant irrespective of their SAT score, achievements and so on and so forth. If it is your dream, go after it hard because there is no substitute to passion in life. So those were my three kind of you know, education and values, the institutions uh, and the kind of family values that I, I got. Uh, I'm going to shift focus and talk a little about the businesses that I've started and the lessons that I've learned. Uh, like I said, life is about embracing failure you know, and celebrating it and learning from it rather than you know, being sad about it, as you can see from my own examples. The first ever business that I started was a coffee shop with five friends of mine at uh, the University of Pennsylvania in the Bear, Ca in the Bear College uh, dorm called the Bear Cafe. Five friends getting together, very excited about entrepreneurship, thought that we had uh, gone to a great school, learned a whole bunch of stuff about business. What we lacked was passion. Nobody knew what they were good at. We kind of randomly assigned the roles to each of us and started this cafe. Uh, you know, call it luck, call it right place at the right time, the cafe started doing really well. We grew it about $50,000 in terms of annual revenue, which is a great size for a uh, on-campus business, if I may call it that. As soon as we got a little complacent, the business blew up. Any idea why? I'll tell you the reason. Today I'm not allowed to ask questions, so uh, I'll tell you the reason. The reason was we lacked passion. Nobody really cared about the roles. Nobody really cared. We got busy with our classes, with recruitment and so on and so forth. We didn't care enough to make it uh, succeed. And the other problem was nobody wanted to have difficult conversations. If I wasn't playing my role, Brian found it very difficult to ask me, Uncle, why did you miss your shift? Or why didn't you assign this properly? A lot of you will go on to become entrepreneurs with your friends. 
please make sure you write a very strong founders agreement and you are on the same page. Very simple exercise, two friends start a business on one sheet of paper, write what is your vision for this business, two, five, ten years. Is it a lifestyle business? Is it something that you want to do for the rest of your life, so on and so forth. I promise you when you come back and read answers to each other, you will know for yourself whether this is a friend you want to do this business with or not. Um, and then finally do what you are good at, right? what you enjoy. Uh, I always say be lucky, be smart, be rich, but more, be most importantly be passionate. Whether it's a sport, a class or a business, if you are not passionate, it is going to be a struggle and a challenge to go to work every single day of your life. So don't do that. The next uh, thing I want to talk about is the value of building trust and relationships. So the second business I built in my life, uh, I used to work for an investment bank in New York. One day my boss called me up and said, look, we've identified four smart people from all over the world to go and build a private equity business uh, for us in India. Is this something you're interested in? I said, sir, I'm going to Harvard Business School. Jana. I'm interested in you writing my letter of recommendation. I don't care where you send me. Send me to Timbuktu. I will work morning till night. But I know you're very involved with this school. I would really appreciate if you could write my letter of recommendation someday. He's like, you know, this is going to be a life-defining experience. I really encourage you to take this opportunity. To go back to one's motherland and to start and build a business for a very prestigious brand already was a rare opportunity. I said no to several top paying jobs and bonuses and this and that, got on a plane, got four business cards and went, came back to India to start this business. We were the largest private equity fund in the world at that time. I thought this was going to be easy. My family was in this business, I thought my last name would carry me far. It was very difficult. You know, I, I remember the first transaction we were working on was a family in South India uh, that we used to, that we were trying to give money to. And we would go to their office, I would sit in the chairman and CEO's office, they would order special sandwiches from us, from, from Taj and the Oberoi's. And we would kind of eat our sandwiches, talk to the promoter, so on and so forth. But when we start interacting with that person's teams, we would get no information. We wore very expensive suits, we carried our bags, gave laptop presentations, gave our business cards. We thought we were untouchable, not a speck of humility. We were all very humble in our personal lives, but I don't know where things, you know, working in investment banking or in private equity when it was arranged, you know, we had lost that sense and touch of humility. Um, and we only cared about investing the capital, showing that we had done the best deed and, you know, kind of penetrated the insulate uh, family business network in India, uh, which I think was being naive at that time. Finally, I called up my dad one day and I said, what is it going to take? for this family to accept money. We are trying to give them money, they are not interested. What is it going to take? We are XYZ and not take the name of the firm. My father said, Beta, thoda humble ho jala hai. You know, if you are not humble and you don't care about people, trust and relationships, you will not go very far. I said, but I am a very humble person. I always build relationships, I always give more than I ask, but I don't understand why they don't want our money. He said, go talk to everybody who works at the company, take off your suit and tie, you know, wear relaxed clothes, wear what the company wears, eat in that canteen, and maybe you'll get your deal done. That's exactly what we did, and we ended up getting the deal. It, it made a lot of money for our firm, and it taught us how to do business in India. But what I learned personally was, there is no substitute to building trust and relationship, whether it's with your spouse, employees, whoever you want to do business with in life, or just in terms of your own life, please give more than you ask. I hate this word networking, you know, like the gentleman who spoke before said, make friends in life, do favors, and you know, it is, even if you don't uh, return somebody who's done a favor to you, please pay it forward. Uh, it'll always be good karma. The last uh, important lesson I will share with you is the importance of setting goals. So I moved back about two and a half years ago and I set up a boutique uh, investment bank here in Delhi. Again, thinking that my degrees and qualifications and the family connections would end up doing a lot of business. It's been a struggle for three years. Very difficult to admit in a public uh, forum, but I will tell you. And the reason for that was, I think the biggest reason was, I had planned my life to perfection till Harvard Business School. But unfortunately, the goal ended there. What after I got that degree? What will I do with it? Uh, I knew I was going to work in an affiliated business with the family. But what exactly I would do and how I would put that education, how I would create impact in this world. Uh, you know, the business school uh, always says, you will all do well in life, but don't forget to do good. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I love teaching. I spend a lot of my professional time teaching. Uh, I love giving back to students, interacting with them. It keeps me young also as I start to do some hair. Um, but you know, 
I have learned from the best and brightest and now I'm trying to live my own dream. I'm trying to create an institution in a field which is unfortunately looked down upon because people only care about money from what, uh, from what the profession has uh, been named at for all these years. You watch movies such as The Wolf of Wall Street and so on and so forth. So I'm trying to build a firm which is actually going to make a difference. We will never do a transaction just for the sake of money or for brand or for reputation. This is what I want to inculcate in my team, in my uh, family, and what we've learned from our family. My grandfather used to always say, Beta paisa kamana bhoat asaan hai, izzat kamana bhoat mushkil hai. For, for the longest time I didn't understand, you know, I said, when I was young, I said, you know, it's so difficult to make money. You have to work so hard, I'm working 24 hours a day, this, that, and the other. Now when I run my own business, I can tell you, it is so easy to make money, but it's so difficult to gain respect. So whatever you do in life, use a very simple principle, if you're making tough decisions. If you were to do this transaction, give this advice, do this certain task, and it got published on the front cover of the Economic Times tomorrow morning, and your grandmother was reading this, how would she react to this? You will get the answer to that question automatically. You will not, to, you will not need to call up your mother, your friends, anybody for that matter. You will know the answer to that question on your own. The second thing I want to talk about is in this lesson was keep your eye on the long run and don't let public perception of success and failure drive who you are and where you're going. Unfortunately, we all tend to start caring a lot about what will my friends say, what will this one say, what will that one say, and that kind of takes us away from your dreams. So please make sure you don't let public perception set your own goals and very difficult to set long term goals, you know, because the path might kind of waver along the way. So get good at setting short term goals in your life and try to just get better at it. I'm not saying start hitting them, just start get better at uh, kind of reaching your short term goals. Entrepreneurship. It is always hard to start and build a business. If it was easy, everybody would be doing that, right? So I would really encourage uh, all of you as young students and uh, undergrad students here from school and college to think about the businesses that you will do in your life and hopefully those will create more impact and do good uh, along with doing well. Uh, four things that I have learned from one of my bosses, Tony Chan, and he's written a book that all of you should read. It's called Heart, Smarts, Luck and Gut. Very essential four qualities that kind of define who an entrepreneurship, uh, who an entrepreneur are. And you will know what kind of entrepreneur you are very early in your life. You know, are you more driven by smarts or luck or guts? I personally feel it's a combination of all of those things. And then finally, I would say, you know, rather than live a life of oh wells than what ifs. You know, so take your chances and live your own life. Chase your dreams. Everyone's already taken. Right? If it was a movie, those characters are already taken. You are unique. Do what you're passionate towards. These are just 10 simple commandments. Uh, I will just quickly browse uh, through these. You can read them. Uh, I'll have somebody share these slides. But, uh, you know, I would like to basically end with, and uh, I think Mr. Matra also emphasized this, you will all do well in life. There is no doubt in my mind. You've been given the same good start in life that we were given from good families and values. So, you know, enjoy life and whatever you do. And don't have any regret in life because, uh, you know, this time will never come back. Uh, very difficult to be 50 years old and look back and say, I wish I had done that, I wish I had done that, I wish I had taken this risk. So take some chances and I promise you, you will do well. At least you will not have any regrets in that. Thank you.